Thank you, Mr. Desaulnier. And now we will go to Representative Comer from Kentucky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Scott, it's good to see you. Uh, following PCMA's statement regarding our recent oversight hearing on this topic, which criticized having a new entrant to the market, Mr. Baker, uh, testify about the challenges he has faced, I wanted to give you a chance to answer a few of the same questions that were discussed during that meeting, during that hearing. However, I first want to acknowledge that the Chief Financial Officer of CVS Caremark Aetna was quoted on May 31st at an industry conference when asked about potential reforms proposed in Congress as saying, quote, there's other ways in the economic model that we can adjust if one of those things changes, end quote, and advised his peers to, quote, not worry about Congress. Now, your presence before us today and insistence on being the only voice testifying to Congress on potential reforms leads me to believe you might have a different opinion of the importance of Congress. Mr. Scott, this poacher shows imatinib, a generic chemotherapy drug used to treat leukemia can cost a patient at CVS more than $17,000 for a 30-day supply. An identical prescription, a 30-day supply of imatinib, would only cost $72 at cost plus drugs. Obviously, imatinib does not cost $17,000 if cost plus drugs can sell it for $72. How would you explain to any patient or payer, such as the federal government, the benefit in CVS charging $17,000 for a drug that can be sold for only $72. It's good to see you, Chairman Comer, and appreciate the opportunity to visit with you again. We've spent time together before, and I'm glad that Mr. Baker's here and has been able to testify in other forums because I do believe, to your point, it's important we hear from a variety of voices. PCMA certainly celebrates every new entrant into the market because we want a very competitive marketplace with a lot of choices. We've heard a lot today about frustration from employers that they can't get the information they need from their current PBM. That's great. I can assume that they can flock to different bot business models as those develop in the marketplace. I believe Congress has an incredibly important role to play, uh, which is why I'm here and why we want to engage, because we all need to be working together towards trying to bring down the cost of prescription drugs. I can't speak as to what the CVS representative was saying to his shareholder audience, other than to say, I would recognize that as policy change occurs, the importance of having a pharmacy benefit company in existence to help employers and other plan sponsors manage their prescription drug costs, that value proposition is going to continue to be present, and that work needs to be done, because if you disaggregate that, you lose that value of scale mm -hmm. and being able to negotiate and harnessing group purchasing power, it's only going to increase costs if every employer and every plan sponsor has to do that on their own. For your example, for, for your example on the chart, uh, I can't speak to the specific example with having that having more knowledge of the, the patient's health plan, the cost sharing, the benefit design. Well, it's to the me, same it's great example I used in the oversight hearing on the, the PBM. But let, 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 me, let me ask another question because my time's running yes, short. Sir. Mr. Scott, CVS Caremark underwent a system enhancement last week, which removed the plan cost column, including for our example here, imatinib. Plan sponsors were previously able to see the total cost of the medication and the total cost to their plan. Unfortunately, as PBMs profess to want transparency and have a focus on providing plan sponsors with information, they are actively suppressing information available to plan sponsors. Thankfully, this information magically became available again last night, right before this hearing. And Mr. Scott, I'm having trouble reconciling these two things. We continually hear about how PBMs would like to provide transparency, but then see intermittent or incomplete information provided to plan sponsors. Can you provide some insight into voluntary actions PBMs could take right now to provide this data to PBM clients? Yes, sir. Uh, if a pharmacy benefit company is not providing the information that a client is requesting when they're drawing up their RFP, when they're designing their contract, then that client's going to move to another PBM. It is in the interest of the PBM to make sure they're providing the data. Well, so why they haven't they taken those actions? Why, why you know, they, they talk about transparency, and that's what you know, you've got other committees looking into this. So oh, we're going to have legislation to be more transparent. The secretary testified in a committee hearing. I said, transparency is the answer. Well, why, why won't the industry just be transparent? I believe the industry is transparent. Uh, I disagree, respectfully. I, I understand that. 
but if, if the if the companies are not providing what the, the client is asking for, the client is going to move elsewhere. That's why we see new business models able to enter into the marketplace and differentiate in the kinds the, of the, contracts the, they're willing to offer. The problem with the client is the, the industry is exhibiting vertical and horizontal manipulation of the pharmaceutical market. That's the problem, and that's what Congress is going to have to do, Mr. Chairman, to fix the problem. Transparency is a, is a great political talking point, but Congress has been talking about that for years and nothing happening. I appreciate this committee hearing. I look forward to working in a bipartisan way to try to get resolution to this, to this problem. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.